Okay. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our virtual workshop today. My name is Sam Stevens. I'm the director of the American Indian Institute here at Mace Community College. Um, we're really excited to have you today. We want to acknowledge that May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we're excited to offer this uh, really interesting workshop titled Finding Success While Under Stress. Um, just to FYI, today's session is going to be uh, recorded if you'd like to watch it again. Um, but when I got in this position several months ago, I was putting together a, a conceptual model of uh, ways to better serve our students at, at Mace Community College. And one of the areas of, of uh, emphasis that I kind of wasn't too sure how to address was uh, the mental health and awareness uh, side of it. And all these kind of ideas were going through my head. And it seems like the universe kind of felt that and got in touch with uh uh, in touch with me through an email uh, and, and connected me to the, to the Steve Fund. Uh, the Steve Fund is an organization that provides mental health and wellness support for students of color. So in this case, I was put in group and in touch with this uh, amazing group of, of people who helped create this workshop today. Uh, it's our hope that we can offer continued workshops throughout the year um, in fall 23 and into uh, spring of 24. And this is kind of a pilot program that's bought, brought to you by um, our career services department here at Mason Community College, our TRIO student support services, and the American Indian Institute here. Um, I am really, really excited to uh, introduce our presenter. Uh, she's an indigenous mental health counselor, a mom, a daughter. Uh, she's going to be a student again and many other roles. Uh, she's from the Dry Creek Rancheria Band of Pomo Indians in Northern California. So here's uh, Haley Ferroni, and she's going to give us an awesome presentation today. Thank you, Sam. Welcome, everybody. Um, I apologize. I can't see you all if you come off and show your uh, video, uh, your faces on video, but I am here and the chat is available for participation. A little bit about the Steve Fund. So the Steve Fund was started by the Rose family um, who lost their son Steve to mental illness in 2014. Um, and as a result of that, the Steve Fund, you know, was really began this journey to become the nation's leading organization focused on supporting the mental health and emotional well-being of young people of color. Our vision with the Steve Fund is that every student of color is fully supported with the resources like programming services um, and institutional cultures that value and promote their mental health and well-being. And so that's um, what we've done here is partnering with the American Indian Institute and Mesa Community College to bring you this workshop today. Before we begin, I would like to do just a land acknowledgement, letting you know where I'm at. I'm located in Northern California on um, unceded Wapo, Pomo, and Miwok. Uh, territories. And from what I understand, Mesa Community College is located on the um, Autumn, Peepush, and Akimel um, territories. So I just want to acknowledge that and um, thank you all for being here and um, welcome. Uh, in the chat, you can see there's a link that if you're ever somewhere else and you'd like to know um, whose land you're on, that link will take you there and um, you can explore that further. A brief agenda for today. Uh, we'll be going over the introduction, objectives, and community agreements. Then we'll be going into um, the uh, idea or concept of living in two worlds, transitioning into discussing money and finances, and then looking at how we can navigate and find success uh, through all of our stresses. And lastly, we want to close it with a resource share and a closing uh, survey. So please don't leave before uh, we share that with you. The objectives for today's workshop are to recognize how cultural, academic, and financial obligations really impact um, Native students' mental health and well being. We also want to identify different strategies to work through our students and be successful in our academic adventures. And lastly, we want to gain the resources to support our overall well-being. So some community agreements before we begin. Um, if you could please be present, as present as possible. Um, if you need to 
uh, silence notifications. That's what I did on my phone and computer. Um, try to engage as best as you can. I will have um, be posing questions to the group, and I'm not sure how big the group is or if there'll be opportunity to unmute. Um, but if if not, if you're not comfortable unmuting and sharing in that way, you can always participate in the chat box, and um, both myself as well as the Stephen will have be able to um, share that with me. The next one is to be open to reflection. Um, some of the content is going to be personal for you, hopefully. And so we really want you to um, take what we're giving and engage with that and see how it's affecting your life personally, um, which leads into the next part, which is self-experts. Um, you are the expert in your life and your life experience. And so being able to reflect on your experience um, acknowledge where you're at, what things are you may be struggling with, um, to then hopefully find some, some tools and strategies to help you move forward. And lastly, um, the presentation here is, you know, we really want to be respectful and affirm both your experiences and your feelings. So before I begin, um, I just wanted to do just a brief sort of like get to know who's in the audience. Um, is there anybody, and you can use the reaction button, I think maybe thumbs up or in the chat. Um, is there anybody here who is the first person in their family to attend college? Um, you know, so can you see if any, any first generation college students? Oh, yep. I, I see, see some hands raised. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Me too. Okay. Um, are there any uh, folks from tribal communities? And if so, which tribe or tribes do you represent? Wonderful. Lakota, Navajo Nation. Awesome. And for other folks and, and, and for everybody, um, what is one thing that is your favorite thing about Mesa Community College? When I um, was doing research for this presentation, I, I learned a lot about the campus and I'm I'm curious to know what are folks' favorite things about Mesa? Our students. Yes, without them, none of this is possible. Awesome, multiple campuses. That's cool. Okay, please feel free to keep adding. Ooh, flexible class offerings. Well, y'all are doing a great job selling Mesa Community College to me, International Student Program, hoping to be a leader in mental health literacy. Awesome. Yeah, please feel free to keep adding in the chat, and um, we'll be checking it periodically. So one of the big things for a lot of Native students is that, you know, sometimes we might feel as though we're living between two worlds. Right, we're navigating and balancing both our academic responsibilities with our cultural commitments. Um, for, for students and participants who are from Native communities, as well as, as uh, participants not, sometimes we have cultural commitments that were expected that may be um, annual or uh, seasonal. And so are there any big events or obligations 
that you have either familiar, familial, or in your communities that you're expected to be at. I know for me, we do a big um, strawberry celebration at the end of April. So that's always something that we look forward to. Yes, ceremonies and family gatherings can be a big one. And so part of that is really a school calendar versus a cultural calendar. Right, so what do we do when we're supposed to be in school, but we maybe have major cultural or community events, whether that's uh, tribal meetings, whether that's celebrations of birth, um, transitions for community members who've passed on, or other general ceremonies. Um, trying to navigate that as a, as a Native student can feel heavy, um, especially when you're at Mesa to be a student, but these other um, cultural obligations really weigh on us heavily. And we're looking at ceremonies in general and how much time and energy those things can take, right? Things may take time to travel to if um, Mesa is not your, if Mesa is not, you're not located close to Mesa, um, you know, your, your tribal community is not located close. Um, you may need time to work on regalia, prepare for this um, ceremony. You may have to prepare food. You may have to spend the time there, actually getting there and being there. And all of that can pull you away from focusing on, on school and classes. There may be specific familial obligations, right? We may have to take care of the elders in our family. Um, we may have to participate in certain giveaways or other things like that. Um, we may have our own children as students or other dependents and people who are relying on us to take care of them. And so every family is different. And um, these are additional um, stressors that may add on to our lives as students. Sometimes students feel a sense of guilt. Um, and this guilt can come from one school and our um, cultural expectations are overlapping. You know, what are we prioritizing? Um, we may feel guilty for not attending ceremonies or not um, being there for, our, not being there physically, right, for our communities or our families. Um, and on the flip side, if we do attend those things, we may feel guilty for missing classes or letting um, assignments slip um, because, you know, we want to maintain those relationships with our families and communities while also, you know, navigating with school. And so it can kind of feel like a juggling act here. And lastly, some students may feel misunderstood. Um, for a lot of first-generation college students, we may feel that our families can't or don't understand the difficulties we're facing as students, right? They may not have the same experience we do. And so that may um, prove difficult to in how we share what we're going through, especially if we're struggling and they're unaware of that experience. You know, we may feel like our struggles aren't as real as our family struggles, right? Because we know the real circumstances they're facing. And so we may not wanna feel like a burden by sharing those um, struggles. And that can all lead to a sense of guilt or misunderstanding, um, which can, can be very stressful for our students. And we may also, as students, even feel misunderstood by peers and professors who may not have the same life experiences we do or the same expectations in terms of cultural obligations or familial obligations. And so I think one of the uh, really cool things that the American Indian Institute is doing is kind of bridging those gaps, right? Trying to work with professors and students and build community uh, of peers. A big stressor for students is finances. I think it's a big stressor for a lot of folks um, these days, but finances definitely, right? Um, one of the things I read about Mesa Community College is it's actually a quarter of the cost to attend um, Arizona State 
annual attendance, which I thought was pretty cool. So for folks and students who are considering transferring to a four-year, it's a really great start you've got here at Mesa to kind of um, manage and plan your budget before potentially transferring on. So some of the big stressors about finances are um, twofold. One is a lack of familiarity, and then the other one is hidden costs. <clears throat> So there is a lot of there are a lot of ways to fund um, to fund your college education. So first, there's FAFSA. Has, have folks heard of that? I'm hoping most have. It's the free application for federal student aid. Perfect. Um, and so this is something that you fill out online. It's a federal program, you know, regardless of what institution you're attending. And they will look at your income or your parents' income, depending on your age. And they will determine the amount of aid that you will need to attend the, the college that you're at. And so that can come in a lot of different forms. Um, the first may be uh, loans. Uh, and loans are not gifts of money, but somebody's, you know, somebody's, um, you know, the government is offering you these loans and you'll have to pay interest on them. The difference between subsidized and unsubsidized loans is when you'll pay that interest or when you'll start accruing that interest to pay back. And so subsidized loans are loans that when you're in school, there's no interest. You're not having to, you know, say you have $10, you're not earning 10 cents every day while you're in school. So the subsidized loans are the loans that you don't have to um, start accruing interest until after you graduate. Unsubsidized loans are loans that you receive. Um, and when you receive them, they start accruing interest. And so it's just something to keep in mind when you're agreeing to financial aid packages. There are also grants and scholarships. Some grants are the free money, right? They'll give you the money for your school, but you may have to meet a certain requirements um, for scholarships. Sometimes you have to be eligible for scholarships either with GPA, uh, majors, it could be. Um, community-based. And so those are all things that you can look into to help support um, yourself financially. Um, additionally, there are private loans and some people do do these routes and then not included on here. Um, sometimes there are tribal assistance, uh, depending on your tribe, you may have assistance with uh, your education um, and or family financial support. And then it looks like somebody shared the, um, uh, a resource about the American Opportunity Tax Credit. This is not something I'm familiar on, but I do plan on looking into it, so thank you. Um, but they said it's only available the first four years of college, so something to keep in mind. And when we look at hidden costs, so we know it costs money to go to school, but there are other costs that may pop up that may prove um, as a stressor for students because they weren't anticipating these things. So sometimes students will get financial aid and they'll say, oh, wow, this is a lot of money. This covers my classes and then some, excuse me. The and then some is I think supposed to address some of these hidden costs. So what are they? Hidden costs can include transportation, parking permits on campus, gas, um, how, you know, transportation to and from your home to the school, whether that is, um, a bus system, a uh, light rail, uh, maybe Uber. Some people might take a uh, ride share. Um, you may get parking tickets depending on where you're at if you don't move a car right, you know, on the on the correct day. And so those are all hidden costs that can pop up regarding transportation that can affect and impact students' budgets. There's also housing and meal plans. Um, from what I understand, Mesa Community College does not have student housing. So looking at the housing market. Uh, to rent or buy in, you know, in the area as um, can be pretty stressful, especially if you're navigating that outside of the community. So you don't, you, you aren't familiar with the area um, that can add additional stressors. And also uh, with regards to meal planning, there are rising food costs for a lot of us. Um, maybe this is the first time you are cooking meals for yourself as opposed to enjoying 
you know, family meals um, on a regular basis. And so pl really planning for that and thinking about that versus possibly eating out every day um, and what that looks like on your budget. Books can be uh, very expensive for students, um, especially buying new books, depending on the classes you're taking. And so that is a big hidden cost that I don't think a lot of students are aware of when they first enter. There are options to support, um, to kind of alleviate this. So selling books back, buying used books. Um, sometimes you can ask professors to leave a, a book um, at a library to check out if you can't purchase it, but so that you can use it regularly. Um, and sometimes, I'm not sure the rules here at Mesa Community College, but some professors will even provide electronic copies of materials so that you don't actually have to purchase them. So all some things to consider. And then for the last two, we've got living expenses um, and extracurricular activities. So in addition to all of those things, right, if you're living on your own and you have to pay for utilities or your toiletries, anything to run a household, um, if you need internet to do your homework, uh, you need a computer to work on, those are all things that you need, but you might not necessarily plan for. So just some things to think about um, moving forward. And then obviously extracurricular activities um, or contributing to family bills, going to the gym, eating out, those are all things that will impact your budget as well. Here we are at the end of your semester and it's almost summer. Congratulations and thank you for joining us in your finals week. Does anybody have any summer plans? Any school, work, travel? Travel and work, a holiday. I've got some working, some small, small travel. For those of us who are taking breaks for the summer from school, we may be losing some structure, right? Without our classes, we may have more free time during the day, but you know, without that accountability of, oh, I need to be on campus at this time, from this time to this time, and I need to study from here to here till dinner, you know, we, we may be like, oh, you know, I'm gonna just watch this new show on, on Netflix and I'm gonna binge it and then the days may start melting together. And so sometimes when summer happens and we don't have that structure, um, it can really throw off our scheduling, especially as we, for summer it might be okay, right? But as we transition back into fall, really getting out of that um, and getting back into our classes may be uh, tricky for us. We may be traveling. I see time with family, holidays. Uh, some of us may do study abroad as an option. Some of us, we talked about attending ceremonies or going on other vacations. All of those things I think are really wonderful and can really help us decompress from the stress of the year and can really rejuvenate us as we transition back into uh, school in the fall. And so kind of thinking of it as, I'd like to think of it as like a little bank you know, you are really busy with school and work, and there are things that require your mental and physical and emotional energy, and that may be stressful. But if you've got this like bank of positive experiences, um, like spending time with family, going on holidays, vacationing, all those things, you can kind of kind of withdraw from that um, so that you're not worn down by the end of the year. For those of us who are working or who are continuing to attend school, as we transition back into the fall, we may need to take a break to do what fall to spring to summer is a lot. And so I really just want and encourage folks to take that break in any way that they can financially, emotionally, um, for their own well being, um, because it's really important to kind of check in and recenter, especially because you want to put your best foot forward um, as you start again in the fall. 
And all of those things do lead for how do we then again plan for fall. So if we're transitioning from possibly working full-time over the summer, what is that gonna look like when we start to see classes again? How are we gonna adjust for that um, change in our income? Uh, for those of us who are anticipating financial aid and planning their class schedules, how can we um, budget the financial aid that we're going to be getting to make sure that it's lasting us the way we need it to? And so all of this is like, you know, it's in your brain. It's all mentally taxing. And so making sure that we have the opportunities to reflect and think about how it's impacting us and how we can um, can we work through this stress? So that was a lot. So it can be a lot of big stressors for students. And so especially as on top of your finals preparation. And so um, I just wanted to know what are some of the biggest stressors that you have right now or are thinking about as we're reaching the end of the semester and heading into summer? And feel free to share in the chat. Yes, getting everything done that needs to be done. Sometimes it can feel like a never ending list, right? Or you mark it off on the top of your list by the time you get down to the bottom, that, that thing at the top maybe pop back onto the bottom of your list to do, for sure. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, some students may be uh, stressed finding jobs or internships as their, their finals are easing up or they're getting ready to end the semester. Those are things that are really pressing on them. Um, internships looking for opportunities uh, to advance and, and then also finding jobs. Much appreciated taking care of elders very, very important and also very difficult, right? And um, the love that we have for them doesn't make it any less difficult. I think um, I personally, we have my grandmother living with us, so I can understand this on a personal level. Um, it is, it is a lot. It is a lot. And so we appreciate students um, who are able to do that and navigate that as well. Yeah, thank you, everybody. So who are we, right? Sometimes we get asked that question um, and some of us may answer, oh, we're a student or we're a son or a daughter. We may be a community member. We may be a dancer, we may be a gamer. Maybe a joker, maybe spiritual. And sometimes when we're asked um, that question in a context, it's related specifically to our environment. And so when, when we're identifying ourselves at Mesa, we may be expected to, to be students first, but that's really hard, right? Because the truth is we are all of these things and it's really hard to separate out that even though we're students, we're never just students, right? <clears throat> we may be native people. We are also who we're related to. We're also to all of the other wonderful things that make up who we are. And so we end up looking like this, right? One of us, you know, a piece of us is not just one thing or the other. And so we're always our, wholly ourselves. 
And um, so when we address the ways that all of the stresses and these responsibilities and obligations affect us, we really have to look at it completely, right? It's not just us looking at how do we support ourselves academically as students, but how can we support ourselves, um, our, our mental health, right? Our physical health, our spiritual health, our emotional health, right? And all of these things. And so it's really important that we recognize that and I think that's one of the um, wonderful things of, is that a lot of Native people have many ways of recognizing that. Sometimes it's a medicine wheel, but always I think it's acknowledging that all of these parts exist and coexist and that we have to take care of these uh, parts of ourselves and nourish these parts of ourselves in order for us to be well and do well. how can we find success through stress? Before I offer my suggestions, I wanted to ask, um, how have you been successful? Thank you, Anessa, for reiterating that question. I'm seeing a laughing a lot, connecting with friends and family who you haven't seen in a while. Taking time to meditate, wonderful. Taking time for myself, connecting with family. Wonderful, navigating your own mental health and making sure that you're staying on top of, on top of what you need to do, including going to the gym, getting enough sleep. sunlight, spending time with pets. I'm right there with you. I've got a dog and my one of my favorite things to do is to go to the dog park. Nice physical activity. You all are experts. I think you touched on a, a lot of things that I'm going to touch on, so I really appreciate that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think all of that speaks to this first point, which is really understanding ourselves. So if we know who we are, where we're at, we can set realistic expectations and goals for ourselves, and we can acknowledge where maybe we need some support. And, and only through knowing ourselves and understanding how we operate and how we have been successful and maybe haven't been successful in the past, can we then move forward to adopt strategies and tools to get us where we want to be. One of the things, like an example that I like to use for this understanding ourselves is, um, is like, say you have an essay that's due and you know it's due. Um, do we have folks who write at one draft and then revise it and then finalize it? Or do we have folks who wait until the last minute to get our creative juices going? That's me. Right, and there's nothing wrong with either approach, right? If you're successful, either approach can be appropriate for you. But say you're that person who likes to wait until the last minute, you know, the 11th hour and you're typing away furiously uh, on your essay and you know that's what you're gonna do. What are some tools that you can do to make sure that your mental health doesn't suffer while you're doing that? So maybe that's getting a comfy place to set up your computer, um, getting water and snacks to prepare you for a late night, phoning a friend and saying, hey, I need you to call me at 8 a.m. because I have to turn this paper in, right? Having somebody to keep us accountable. Um, sometimes um, folks need to write things down, right? Uh, or put reminders in their phone. There are a lot of different uh, tools and strategies. And I think when we know what works for us, um, it'll, it makes us more successful, right? Even with the stress that we're facing. Uh, 
Another big thing for having success through stress is really managing, um, having a manageable schedule. We may want to take 18 units, right? But maybe we're working 40 hours a week. And so really thinking, can I, can I take all these classes? When am I going to have time to study? When am I going to have time to sleep? When am I going to have time to kind of breathe outside of work and school and everybody's different. So really just knowing a manageable schedule that works for you, right? There's no right or wrong necessarily. Um, it's just what's right for you. There are different um, tools and strategies within managing your schedule. Um, sometimes people use planners, they use backwards planning. So if there is something, a deadline, and they know they, they can break it down into smaller components, they can say, okay, this is due on this date. Okay, the week before I'm gonna do this, the week before I'm gonna do this. And so that sometimes helps to uh, a lot of people like whiteboards or post-it notes. Some people like planning on their phone or on their digital calendars, setting reminders, um, but just making plans, I think, and, and knowing what's going to happen and anticipate is a good strategy for what's to come. And then possibly my favorite thing for finding success through stress is um, finding and making joy. And so I think a lot of you share that in the what has been um, made you successful in the chat, which I really appreciate. Um, I think what, you know, what makes you laugh, what brings you joy, really reflecting on that and seeing if you can incorporate that even in small doses, right? Um, on the daily or weekly basis to help get you through. And um, that's why I have this gif. I really enjoy this guy and, and the character he plays, right? It's just, I think as Native people, we really like to have fun and find joy even in the stressful moments. So um, I would encourage everybody to continue to do that. There's a couple more um, suggestions for finding success through stress. And so um, a couple of people touched on it in the chat and that is uh, movement, whether that's walking around outside, whether that's dancing, uh, whether that's cleaning up your house, um, whether that's stretching or yoga. There are um, a lot of ways that we can move our bodies that really can reinvigorate us and get those endorphins flowing and help support our mental uh, well-being. Some of us are very, have, uh, consider ourselves very spiritual, whether that is, um, you know, through formal, formally attending services or ceremonies. Um, some of us sing, some of us pray, some of us smudge, some of us just find. Um, and uh, reflecting and meditating to be that spiritual spiritual connection, excuse me. And, and that can be very important for us as Native students, right, to maintain that sense of self and spirituality, even as we're navigating um, our academic experiences. And then lastly, um, reaching out. So historically, you know, as Native people, we didn't have to do things alone, and we still don't, right? That's the great the great thing about uh, where we're at today, um, is we still don't have to do things by ourselves. Um, all of the parts of ourselves are interwoven to make us who we are, and we are also part of larger groups and communities. And it is important to tap into these communities and these larger groups and connections when we're really facing these stressful times. And so as a, as a way to kind of reflect on that, my question is, who do you reach out to when things are getting tough? I'm seeing some friends and family for folks who may be feeling isolated, who feel like they don't um, have anybody to rely on. I'm hoping that the next part of this, where we go into different resources and connecting points, you can take some of those um, 
and keep them for yourself because there are people in your corner rooting for you, even if you don't know they're there. And one of those is the American Indian Institute on campus. It's located in building 36N. That's where um, Sam Stevens works. Um, and so he's a great connecting point if you feel like you need to reach out to somebody. Um, on campus um, at the American Indian Institute, they have a computer lab, they have a study space, they have advising support, and then they also have opportunities to build broader com community, to build those connections that you may feel like you don't have at this point. And um, some of those are through student groups. And so there's two big student groups I saw. Um, the first is the Intertribal Student Organization. Excuse me. Um, the Intertribal Student Organization um, meets at the American Indian Institute, which is at the Thunderbird Success Center. Um, and they put on different events. Luckily, they've been pretty robust. Um, they recently did a Missing Murdered Indigenous Women event, I think last week, as well as a powwow. And so that's always a great way to get involved and build community and relationships. Uh, they are open, the, the space is open year round, although as we enter summer, it's gonna be um, a Monday through Thursday schedule. And then there's also the American Indian Science and Engineering Society or ACES, and that is a national organization, but they've got chapters on different campuses and that's just connecting uh, students, native students in the STEM fields to both opportunities on campus as well as larger opportunities for internships and jobs um, and graduate experience, graduate school experience. And the Steve Fund, we've shared some resources. Um, so feel free to copy and paste them into your browsers or into a note if you want to talk to those. One of the really cool things that I found when researching Mesa is that there are a lot of um, supports available, which I thought was really cool. So there are academic supports, everything from um, supporting students who maybe need accommodation requests for their classes, maybe need to find study spaces or need help um, and support with testing anxiety. And that's just a couple to name. There's also basic needs support. So uh, food, mental health needs, prayer and meditation rooms. I think uh, one of the participants mentioned there was a food market and distribution on campus. Um, there's monthly food distribution in the fall and spring um, semesters. And then there's different counseling services offered on, uh, on campus. I believe there's in-person and distance counseling. When you click on the links that uh, were provided, the one I think it is basic needs community resources, you'll see a, a page that will bring you to a lot of different resources, whether that's food resources, uh, SNAP, housing and shelter, personal safety support, uh, child care after school and youth programs that you may be, need to be directed to, different transportation services. For students looking for jobs um, or who need help with unemployment, there's that resource as well. Um, and tech and software, as well as veteran and military services. So when I said Mesa has a lot, they have a lot. And I think it's really, really cool that they have all of that support for students. And I encourage everybody to find the resources that they may need. And then this is that there's some broader resources. So a little bit, we zoomed in on Mesa, a little bit bigger. Um, and in the Stephen, there's some links to these websites. The first is the Strong Hearts Native Helpline. And that's a 24 seven safe, confidential and anonymous dating and sexual violence helpline for Native and Alaska Native folks. Um, there's a chat now feature that allows us to connect one-on-one -on -one with a live advocate. There's also the website called We Are Native. Um, they've got some really cool resources on there regarding culture and Native pride. Um, discussions about our bodies, relationships, dating and sexual health information, different mental health resources uh, specifically on their website, as well as for, for students and people looking to get involved in their community and how to make an impact. They've got a link there. Additionally, they have an ask your relative feature, which allows you to submit a question that can be answered by staff. And 
and of course, the Steve Fund, who's bringing you this presentation today. Um, the Steve Fund has a 24-7 train crisis counselor available via text. All you have to do is text Steve to 741741 to connect with them. So if you're feeling stressed or depressed or anxious and you really don't know, you know where to turn, I encourage you to please put this phone number in your phone and you can just reach out whenever you need to. If you'd like additional information or questions um, about the Steve Fund, you can email info at stevefund.org. And then in the chat, um, you can see the Steve Fund's uh, website. And then the Steve Fund also has a social media presence at the Steve Fund. Are there any other resources? Since I'm, I'm not at Mesa, are there any other resources for the folks on the ground there um, that want to share? with our, our community and participants about some things they may be able to uh, get support from that I might have missed? Um, I'll share that uh, we have a really good partnership with an organization called um, Native Health, and they provide uh, culturally responsive and relevant uh, therapy and counseling services for, for students that I've actually uh, helped several students fill those applications out, and they've gotten services through them and going through some very tough times in their lives. So that's that's an organization that we uh, work really closely with if, if uh, students need that kind of help. That's awesome. Thank you, Sam. If you have a, a link, that, if you're able to share it in the chat, and if not, um, for, for participants, Sam is at the American Indian Institute, so he's willing to connect you with that resource and help you fill out that paperwork, it sounds like, which is really... Um, nice and much appreciated. Awesome. It looks like there is um, an affinity group for um, employees and students with disabilities called Ability Maricopa. And a mental health club on campus for students. Awesome with the contact there. Perfect. And the link for Native Health and Native Health Phoenix is, is in the chat box for everyone. And we have some really uh, uh, awesome faculty and staff members um, who are on this call today who um, the, just just from a from a support perspective, I mean, if students can't come to us, you know, and they they ask their uh, instructors and they're, they will find resources. They will make the connections uh, for students. Um, they care uh, so much about just supporting the people that they're gonna that they're working for. So um, that that's another reason you know why I love doing this job because people on our campus uh, really really have a passion for working for students. That's wonderful. I appreciate that. Um, any professors or other staff persons who are here to support. With regards to Ability Maricopa, if you wanted to um, leave your email address in the chat for folks to reach out, is that a possibility? Yes, I'm trying to raise my hand, but I'm not succeeding at it. So I hope you can see me. I'm not, I'm not sure. I hope you can hear me and see me. But my name is Kate Moeller, and I serve as the Vice President of Ability Maricopa. I've also been teaching English at Mesa Community College since 1995. And I can say that more and more students are very willing to step forward and ask for help with anxiety and depression and even disorders like autism and bipolar disorder and anxiety. So I want to encourage students to reach out to their professors um, who, who might be um, knowledgeable about resources they, they're not sure about or can certainly steer you in the direction for counseling, you know, which is free and great at MCC for students and faculty alike. Um, I would I would love it if you could email me and I would give you more information. Um, I will put my email in the chat. Thank you so much. And then before 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 folks. 
go. If you could please um, click on the link that was put in the chat to take the survey, or you can use your phone to scan the QR code um, that is available. I don't know if there's any questions, um, but if folks want to answer questions after completing that survey, we'll be here on the call for um, a little while. And I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, thank you to the Steve Fund, to Mesa Community College, and the American Indian uh, Institute for making this possible today, as well as all of you participants um, sharing your perspective, your experience has been really valuable. And I hope that resource has been, um, has been effective and useful for everybody on the call. Cool. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we really, really appreciate everybody who, who came. Um, if there were any questions uh, here as we as we uh, end our session today, uh, please feel free uh, to ask or type them in the chat. Um, uh, again, this session has been recorded. So if you uh, need, need a copy or would like to share a copy with students or anybody that you feel like might be interested in, in uh, learning more, please feel free. We'll have a copy of it and we can send that out um, afterwards. But um, we really, really appreciate you guys uh, coming out and and uh, listening uh, and, and Haley, especially for uh, all the information that you shared with us. Thank you. Um, and Sam, if you feel comfortable putting your email address in the chat for any folks that may sure. want to reach out to you. Yeah, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to reach out and we can make connections if we need to. <clears throat>